lunch and the uh, somebody had too much damn time on their hands is this do y'all see this i had to come show y'all this car real quick that's sitting there sitting over here in my storage yard i ain't never seen nothing like this before like they put some type of i don't know what that is all over the truck I thought it was some kind of body wrap at first when I first walked past it, but that's actually individual like decals. Yeah, they had too much time on their hands, man. Anyway, let me go and get myself to work. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the process. So Oh, I'm trying to get back on the grind. I ain't made a video in a while, but um, I'm going to bring y'all along for my today's journey. Um, I was able to get a couple loads off of Central Dispatch. And this is actually my first catch off of Central Dispatch, believe it or not. Because I'm, ne I'm never really able to like call right on. Like, if I see a load hit, if you don't call that load in, like the second it drop, you ain't going to get it. So I never really been able to catch a load, but I caught two today. There are COD, cash on delivery, which is music to my ears. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna go grab these two. I'm gonna take them tomorrow. So that's one thing I was able to get worked out because it's Friday, it's kinda late in the day, it's two o'clock. I don't wanna deal with traffic. I'm getting a late start to my day. So I told him I would just pick them up today and bring them out first thing tomorrow morning. Saturday morning, so But one thing I will show y'all real quick before I go ahead and get started. I actually had uh caught me some loads on Metro load This was for uh, a Certus shippers. It was 3 2022 for Bronco sports um, I had to just cancel these because they had a it's going from storage yard to storage yard and they got a delivery um the operating hours only from seven to three so i couldn't get there by three o'clock i had to just call back and say i couldn't do it because i was on metro low board all morning 7 a.m didn't see anything I took me a small nap woke back up around 10 and it was flooded with uh some of these ford broncos so what i'm noticing is since the uaw strike has ended the low board started to come back to life they got cars, they, they're getting cars back moving and grooving, so uh, that was a good thing. I just got a late start, so I couldn't get to that load today, so I had to just go ahead and put it back in the ocean. Let somebody else catch it. So let me go ahead and get rolling. Uh, I'm going to an uh, auction first, which is like a mile down the street from where I stole my truck at. Can't beat that. And I got to go to an auto repair shop, which is two miles from my first stop. So... That's the plus about using uh, Central Dispatch. I was able to put in my start area. Basically, is where I store my truck at. I put my start area in for the city where I store. And it showed me anything that was in my area. So I picked up two jobs one mile from where I store my truck at. So that's like a one mile deadhead. Can't beat that. So let's go ahead and get rolling. Greater Detroit Auto Auction. Find somewhere to park. See, that didn't that didn't even take me? Didn't take five minutes to get here. So let me just find somewhere I can park so I can run inside and uh we're gonna go over a few things. I'm gonna kind of show y'all this whole process. I used to actually buy a lot of cars here. Back when uh you can buy cars for cheap and sell them for high. <laughs> But those days kind of dried up. But anyway. They must have had an auction today. There's still folks out here. So. The way this works. Since this is a COD off of Central Dispatch. The customer had to just send me a gate release pass. For the vehicle. Which is right here. So 
this is my first time at this auction, so I'm assuming I just gotta go in here. You gotta go in doing burnouts. I don't like getting some action while you're recording. <laughs> but, uh, I'm guessing I just gotta go in here to the front desk, show them my release form, and then find the vehicle and drive this boy out of here. So we're gonna find it out. And I had a few guys asking me when was my next video going to drop. You know, I appreciate y'all looking forward to my videos. But I don't like to just put videos out unless I got something good to talk about. You know, there's something good going on. And I can share it with y'all. Because I hate putting out crappy videos. But um, we're going to go over a few things today. Because for one, like I was saying, I'm finna pick these two cars up and then store them overnight. And I was asked before, you know, are you able to store cars overnight? And sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Some shippers don't like you storing their cars overnight. They think you're kind of trying to build your loads up, which some guys do. They have book loads all week long, you know, book them for where they want to go on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So they'll go get a car, keep it. They'll get one more the next day, keep that one, and take them all on Friday. <laughs> I've seen guys doing that, but that's at your own risk. Let me just say that. Keep in mind, when you got a car in your possession, you're responsible for it. So if anything happens to your truck or that vehicle while it's on your truck, that's an insurance claim coming out your pocket. So it's always a, ch a chance to take I'm doing this today because it's only going to be overnight and my storage yard is secure. He got security out there riding around 24 seven. So I kind of feel kind of secure with that situation, but still ain't no, there ain't no guarantee that anything won't happen. You know, something strange can happen. You can have a bad storm, man. A tree can fall down, hit a, hit a vehicle. Anything can happen. So, like with those new cars I had, I had those 2022s I was supposed to pick up. There's no way, because the dispatcher called me and said, well, if you, don't, if you can't make your delivery appointment today, you can just pick them up and take them on Monday. And that's me storing the cars for two days over the weekend, storing three brand new cars over the weekend on the back of my trailer. No, I'm good. Go ahead and take this load up off for me. If it's still available on Monday, I'll just rebook it on Monday. Y'all ain't finna get me. But we'll speak on that a little bit further. I wanna share one experience one of my buddies had. Let me go in here and see what's going on. How you doing? I'm here for a pickup for a vehicle. Then is that the transportation order? What's that? That's the transportation order? No, this is for a different car. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all I got right, right there. Then, oh, you, but you don't have a transportation order for this one? Mm -mm. A transportation order? Do you have a bill of lading or anything for it? Uh, I can go make one now. I didn't make it out yet. Okay, got it. You'll need that? Yes, I will need that. Okay. Um, well, let me see then, that one more time and I'll come back in with that bill of lading. What? Let me see this one more time so I can get the information yeah, of off of it and I'll come back in with Okay, that. got it. I'll, I'll be right here. All right, thank you. So I just learned something new. He needs a BOL before he can release the vehicle to me. So let me show you all this process. I had to actually order me some BOL receipts off Amazon. <laughs> this is my first time for to actually use them because most of the time, uh, most shippers actually just use different apps, different software, like Super Dispatch. Uh, you know, different ship.cars. They got this little software platform you can use. But this is like a, a small dealership. So they just, uh, let me get in and get this together. 
this load is for a small dealership so they just put the request on central dispatch and that's pretty much it so you gotta do everything else manually so i got my bill of ladings right here i gotta write one of these out manually i got me a stamp in here somewhere once i find it so let me go ahead and get myself organized and i'll cut y'all back on here's my stamp i'll cut y'all back on in one second all right so i got myself organized so i had to get all my customer information off of central dispatch and i had to fill out my own bol right here so like i said it's the same as using the app but it's just doing everything manually I do my own inspection on the, on the paper right here. Just mark in any damage I see. Get a signature at pickup and at destination. And I got me a stamp. So I stamped the top of this. I gotta do all three of them. That didn't really show up that good. So I gotta stamp all three of these. And I'm about to leave them a copy. And then I'll have a copy and my customer get a copy. So, let me go ahead and get this finished up and take the too much time here. I hate doing that. So let me go ahead and get to this. All right, so, I got the car released and they finna bring it around to me. So here it is right here. All right, thank you, appreciate it. Pretty nice fusion. Wonder what they paid for this. All right, so by this being a paper BOL, I just pretty much marked scratches all the way around on my BOL. I didn't even get a chance to inspect it before they brought it around to me, but uh, whatever. I left on one copy. I got a copy and my last copy is going to my whoever picks up at the, at the uh, delivery. So let me go ahead. I got to pull my truck forward and then get this car loaded up. Let's get to it. All right. So I got my first one loaded and ready to go. And since this is a uh, COD through Central Dispatch, I'm just going to send my customer some pictures via email and let her know it's been picked up. Again, make sure you cover your butt. Even though I'm not using a, a typical um, dispatch app like Super Dispatch or, you know, Velocity, and there's a few other ones. Madness Driver, you still wanna cover your butt. So I took a bunch of pictures. I'm gonna send them to her from my pickup. And then I'm gonna take it to the destination. I'm taking some more pictures before and after. So, let me talk about what I was speaking on earlier as I get to my next stop. Let me check out all my stuff here and my BOL. I thought I had my BOL. So, I was saying, is it cool to pick up a car and store it overnight? No, I would avoid storing new cars because I had a friend that does car hauling too. And he told me that um, dealing with new cars, going to dealerships, they do those standard, it's called an STI, subject to inspection. So they, they inspect them cars thoroughly. So let's just say you got a car in your possession over the weekend and y'all have a hailstorm <laughs> or a bad thunderstorm, any kind of crazy storm. And those cars get dings, chips, anything on that car. You go, to go in to deliver it that following Monday, they're going to hit you with an insurance claim. And from what I was told, they're doing this on purpose. Like they, they would 
walk around that car with a fine tooth nail. Is that how you say it? They will walk around and try to find something else to put on you just so you can have to get that car fixed. It could have been damage already done from the from the plant, from their storage yard, anything. I heard there's a lot of, you know, scandalous stuff going on in the car hauling business. So you must cover your butt. I'm trying to cover mine the best I can because I ain't got time for no extra money coming out of my pocket. All right, so I got about three miles to go. I need to put this in my GPS real quick. I know the area for the most part, but I still want to just make sure I know where I'm going exactly. So I will talk to y'all when I get to my next stop. All right, so I am here at my next pickup. It's kind of like in a residential area, which sucks for me. I'm gonna try to run over here and get this car real quick so I can get it loaded up. Of course, my phone is ringing like crazy. Everybody wanna call me and talk to me when I'm busy doing something. But, I am here for a uh, Buick Teresa. It's probably that old ugly piece of crap over there. That tan boy. Guess we'll see. How you doing? Yeah, how you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. I am here for a pickup. Uh, Buick Teresa. That tan went over there? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. It runs. It runs? What's that look? What, it ain't running good? Huh? What was that look you just gave me? It don't run good? The oil lights on, but it'll, oh, okay. it'll get you over to your truck. That's all I'm worried about. <laughs> that's all I gotta do. All right, let me go ahead and get loaded up. All right, let's see if this boy actually runs. I had quite a few cars come on the load boards that say they run, and I get there, and they don't. And it has a donut on it. <laughs> so that's gonna suck when it comes to me strapping it down with a donut on it. Let's see. Okay, it starts up. So, we got a bunch of traffic. So, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on getting this across the street with this donut. First car with a donut. I'm pretty sure the process is going to be the same. Just got to make sure I got a good tight fitment on my strap. strap fits <laughs> I was a little concerned but I don't know why still a tire so uh, let me go ahead and get these last couple of straps secured then I'm gonna head back to my storage yard and call this a day and I'm gonna get back up first thing in the morning both these cars are pretty much going to the same area. One's going to Waterford, one's going to uh, White Lake, Michigan. They're probably about 15 miles apart. So, 
Not that bad, but... We got the way it's a car coming. I guess it's pretty much worked out for me. I had two pickups right here in, in my backyard, basically. They're going about 50 miles. They're paying pretty good. I want to say like $4 and some change a mile. I forgot what I said exactly. But there was enough for me to get off my butt and come get them. So I'm cool. So let me go ahead and get these strapped down and then this process will continue later on today or probably first thing in the morning. So let's get to it. Good morning, my good people. So it's about 6.30 a.m. I'm back out here at the yard. I uh, brought both cars back to my storage lot yesterday and caught it at night kind of early. So I'm gonna go ahead and give me an early start today. Um, I got about an hour, maybe an hour and a half drive to my uh, first drop to uh, it's in White Lake, Michigan. Just doing my quick pre-trip inspection. And I may go get some fuel just so I can go uh, go now and not worry about going when I get somewhere I'm familiar. So, uh, yeah. Let me go ahead and get this finished all up. I'm just walking around, checking everything out, checking my straps on the car. And we looking good. So, let's go ahead and get to this morning. Alright, so I am at my first drop. It's a residential a residential neighborhood. It's on a tight little bitty street. And uh the customer driveway is like one of these driveways right here, so it's pretty narrow. So I can't back it in. It's actually this house right here in front of me with this silver pickup in the driveway. So I just parked over on the side of the road the best I could so I can get this unloaded quickly. I really didn't have much room to park, but uh, let me go ahead and get this car with this van off my trailer. Let's get this thing unloaded. So that's one successful delivery. Of course, my phone would ring when I was in the middle of uh, getting this wrapped up. But whenever I start working, my phone start ringing. But it's all good. I'm gonna go ahead and get this trailer back, uh, get my rents back stored away, and head to my last drop. Stop. 
Legend Motors. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this unloaded and then head on home for the day. So we're gonna discuss a few more things before I wrap this video up. So let me go ahead and get this unloaded and uh, go ahead and find my contact so I can get paid. It's a COD. So let me go ahead and get my ramps and everything unloaded. Got the car delivered. Just waiting to get paid. And where's the car? Right over front. Right here? Yep, right there. Do you have a key? Mm -hmm. okay. No problem. Um, what's the name? Profit Transport Logistics? It's a nice van. But, alright. Got that check. Car delivered. Mission accomplished. Now I'm finna head home and wrap this day up. Uh, let me just check my equipment real quick. So, yeah. These are my first two cars that I dispatched on using Central Dispatch. Um, like I said, they was both pretty much in my backyard when I picked them up. I went about 50 miles, if that, to get them delivered. That paid pretty, paid pretty decent, so can't complain about that. I kept them overnight to make it more convenient for me. To avoid traffic and uh it's about 10 a.m so i'm done for the day so one thing i want to leave y'all with is uh so what I'm, I'm learning from using central dispatch it's very important that you uh communicate with your customers when you're picking up and delivering they got like a prompt i'll try to show you in this video um central dispatch do not have an app so everything is like right off their website you can go to the, to the site from your phone but i usually use my pc but you can go right to this uh section where it says dispatch cars like dispatch to you you can mark when you picked it up eta time when you delivered it eta time just to communicate with the customer or you can call them or you can just actually email them i actually did all three and um it's all about your rating, your customer rating. Like I can rate who I work for. When this job is closed out, I can rate my experience with the broker or with the customer. Either they're poor or good or whatever. And they can rate me. Now, your rating shows on Central Dispatch. So if you're either not providing good customer service or you know, you're not delivering as scheduled, or you're damaging vehicles, you get a poor rating. And the more the lower your rating is, the less people will want to work with you. It's kind of like common sense, right? So I noticed that too. And then not having a rating at all, like I didn't have a rating. Mine is like right at zero. So I had somebody tell me, well, we don't want to work with you because, you know, you are you don't have no experience. Nothing we can go off of. I'm sorry, I had to, had to put the phone down for a second. But what I want to say is um, when you first start now using Central Dispatch, just know that you won't have a rating. Everything works on like a works off a rating process. So you have the opportunity to rate your shipper or your broker, whoever you're working with, whether or not they pay on time, if they communicate good, or whatever your experience was with that broker, and it's vice versa. They have they got the opportunity to rate you in your experience. So if you're not communicating, if you're not calling ahead and uh shipping on time, like being at your pickup on time or delivery on time. When you're done with that delivery, they're gonna rate you as a poor carrier. Now, if you get poor carrier ratings, that's gonna kinda of eliminate you from getting dispatches through other brokers. So, just know that. And just also expect that you're not gonna get the best uh, dispatches off Central, like the most, the higher paid ones that might say, you know, good mileage, good pay, for, good pay per mile. Because if they see that you don't have a good rating, they, they're not going to want to work with you. I was told that. 
which is kind of crazy. Like, how am I supposed to actually get my rating up if you don't want to give me a dispatch? That's kind of the way it works. So just kind of get what you can to get in the door to get some kind of rating. Get yourself going. You know, the higher your rating, the more jobs you can dispatch on. And you will see a lot of uh, some of the same companies, like I was trying to say earlier. You'll see like United Road or some of the big carriers, the big companies, shippers, post on Central. And they make you sign up as a carrier with them. And once you do that, you get access to their load board. Like they put their loads across like four or five different load boards. It's kind of crazy. They be on Central. They be on Super Dispatch. They be on Ship.Cars. I see it on Metro Loads, Hawley. Like there's so many different di uh, dispatch load boards. But you'll see it. Just the thing is to get on Central if you want to. There's a monthly subscription like $125 a month. I didn't really like that because I didn't get no, my first month and a half, I didn't get no one load. So I'm just paying a monthly subscription and not making no money with it. So it kind of sucked. But you still got the chance to go on there and see some of the companies that have loads available. You can, you can get their information, go to their website, sign up as a carrier, and then get access to their free load board. So that's one thing that Central could help you with. All right, so I'm finna head back to my storage yard. And then uh, we're gonna wrap this video up. Okay, so back at my storage yard. I am done for today. So I'm gonna do my little final uh, post trip inspection on my equipment. And that's it. I always lower my landing gear on my trailer whenever I'm parked. Whether I'm unloaded or loaded, I always just let my landing gear down just to release some of the pressure off the rear end of my truck. You know, you don't want to have all that weight sitting on the back of your uh, suspension for no reason. If you ain't got to. I heard it helps. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped y'all with some information. We're using central, we're using a uh, central dispatch. So as usual, do me a favor, make sure y'all like this video, share it, leave me a comment. All that YouTube stuff, y'all already know. Profit Transport Logistics. Let's get to it, baby.